Coming up next on Texas Two Wheeling. We're hitting the road and heading down to Glen Rose for a look at the historic town square and a history lesson at Bernard's Mill. Plus off the main square of Glen Rose, the studio of celebrated sculptor and painter Robert Summers. Hear about the amazing sculptures and paintings created by this living legend. Also, visit Heiko and learn about one of the great mysteries of the American West, Billy the Kid. This infamous man, reputed to be one of the worst outlaws sworn dead and buried since 1881, have survived till 1950. Or is it the biggest hoax in Lone Star history? And later, meet Taylor Simpson, 12 years old and a national finalist in barrel racing. Visit the family restaurant her mom and dad built, themed after her success tucked away at Tres Rios, offering a great variety of American foods. All coming up next on Texas Two Wheel. I've traveled every road in this here land. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've crossed the desert bare, man. Breathe the mountain air, man. Travel I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Waco, Hyco, Hondo, Navasota, Winsburg, Jacksboro, Hillsboro, Santa Rosa, Austin, Houston, Galveston, Texas, Canada, Frisco, Buffalo, Conroe, Carson, County, Goliad, Grosbeck, Glen Rose, Red Oak, Post Oak, Live Oak, Lone Oak, no joke. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've crossed the deserts bare, man. Breathe the mountain air, man. Wind blowing in my hair, man. I've been everywhere. Yeah, when it comes to traveling, Texas friends, I've been everywhere. I'm Jody Dean. And I'm Jim Cockrell. Welcome to Texas Two Wheeling. We're in Glen Rose, Texas, a beautiful part of the Lone Star State known for historic towns like Iredale and Heiko. that's absolutely gorgeous if you like traveling the back roads on two wheels. I'll tell you, Jody, this is just a beautiful area down here, especially from the saddle of a motorcycle. And I heard you use the word historic. That certainly describes the area around Glen Rose from the 200 million year old dinosaur tracks in the Paluxy River, which has some of the best preserved dinosaur tracks found anywhere in the continental United States, to the downtown area that reminds you of one of those picture postcards reminiscent of the 19th century Texas. Just down the road a bit is Bernard's Mill Museum. The native limestone flour and grist mill built by Bernard in 1860 still stands on the banks of the Paluxy River, just west of the town square. The mill was the first building in Glen Rose and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Any visit to Glen Rose should start here on the town square. Glen Rose's downtown area is home to dozens of quaint shops where you can prowl through nooks and cubby holes to find antique goods or sit a spell and sip a cappuccino. Just off the square is the city park with huge boulders perched on the banks of the Paluxy River. Now both Jim and I are history nuts and he has obviously passed that trade along to his son. So much so that he and Taylor simply can't resist the occasional stop to look around and in some of the old dilapidated structures. If walls could talk, there are buildings or remnants of buildings in Glen Rose could no doubt keep us spellbound with the history they've seen. Only a few blocks off the main square in Glen Rose is the studio of celebrated sculptor and painter Robert Summers. Robert Summers is a nationally known sculptor of monuments of epic dimensions. He also sculpts smaller bronzes. Robert is also a very well-known painter of Western, Civil War, and other subjects. 
If you're looking for someone to create a stunning major monument, such as the John Wayne at the Orange County Airport, or are looking for some smaller bronze sculptures or paintings or prints from one of the best known and highly celebrated artists of our time, meet Bob Summers. Bob invited us into his studio and sculpting warehouse to see what current pieces he was creating. As we entered the living room, there stood the original Tom Landry clay statue. It was amazing to see the actual piece that the bronze version that now stands at Texas Stadium today was made from. At Bob's warehouse, he shared with us an incredible piece he is creating for Tulsa, Oklahoma. When finished, it will be an East meets West masterpiece. The Cyrus Avery Centennial Plaza will house a larger-than-life sculpture of Cyrus Avery and his family in a Model T abruptly meeting up with a horse and buggy, a not-so-subtle metaphor representing old meets new. In his warehouse, a real Model T was being used as an example for the 135% scale version sitting directly next to it. Bob and I continued our conversation about his favorite piece of all time, the John Wayne statue. That was such a such an honor to do that piece. You know, uh, when I was called, I just almost fell out of the chair. I mean, because there's a lot of sculptors around the world, and to be the one chosen was just you know, mind-boggling to me. Bob shared some rare home movies of the creation of the piece from start to finish. Also on the tape were some clips of Bob discussing with John Wayne's sons the statue. They were so helpful in, in giving little insights as to the demeanor of their pop and everything. It, it was such a, it was a labor of love to do that yeah. project. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you all so much, Jim. Thank you. I appreciate it, and thank you for coming out. Our pleasure. You know what? It's time to hit the road and head south out of Glen Rose. On Highway 67, travelers can see some of the more spectacular views of the northern Texas hill country. About 12 miles down the road is Chalk Mountain. Now you'll have to watch carefully or you'll miss the left turn off Highway 67 that takes you to the Chalk Mountain Cemetery which with over 350 graves probably serves as the best indicator of the history of the area and the people who lived and died here. There's a beautiful old chapel on the cemetery grounds. Brothers and sisters, today our text will be taken from the Texas Motor Vehicle Code. Please turn to page 32. Page 32 of the Texas Motor... Wake up! The land that Chalk Mountain Cemetery sits on used to belong to Hiram Berry Rogers, who donated this site to be used as a cemetery. Looking at gravestone inscriptions, it's easy to tell that life was hard in this part of Texas 125 years ago. People died young, and there are far too many headstones for children who died in the early years of their lives. 
The presence of unmarked graves, however, suggests that there may have been much earlier use of this cemetery. Hiram Rogers joined Lieutenant Sol Ross's group of Texas Rangers as a young man in Waco. After helping find Cynthia Ann Parker, this group of Rangers joined the Confederacy and became part of General Hood's Texas Brigade. Rogers was at Appomattox when General Robert E. Lee surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant. With the dissolution of his regiment, Rogers returned to Waco, where he soon entered service with the state police under Texas Governor Polk. Hiram later came to Erath County and bought land at Chalk Mountain. Hiram Barry Rogers and his wife Nancy are buried here side by side. You know, when you come to a place like this, you can feel the presence of the people who are resting here. A Confederate marker was placed on old Hiram's grave. Later on, a Texas Rangers marker to honor this former Ranger. You know, Roger's great-grandson is Pete Laney, who up until 2003 was our Speaker of the House of the Texas Legislature. Up next, we're gonna head on down to Heiko, where we check in on a controversial story about Billy the Kid. As we left Chalk Mountain to continue our journey, we noticed a few hundred yards south of where we turned back onto Highway 67, the remnants of what most travelers along this stretch of road think of as the community of Chalk Mountain. Originally established in the 1850s as a trading center, the settlement didn't actually become a town until the 1870s when its post office first opened. Chalk Mountain grew to more than 80 inhabitants by the turn of the century, but by 1910, the population had dropped to less than 50. And today, the number of occupied residences could be counted on two hands, and you'd still have several fingers left. One of the most interesting of those residents is Zarita Jackson, who runs a small gas station convenience store full of memories of yesterday, when full service was offered, and you could trust your car to the man who wears the star. Hi, man. How are you doing? Oh, Dr. Pepper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were you from here originally? Yes. Uh, which town? Which town? <laughs> no town. Just here? <laughs> this town. No kidding. Where did you grow up? Uh, I was born a couple of miles over here in the pasture. <laughs> My brother, who was born over there at the same place, was, uh, he was born in 1908. So they came here before 1908. Really? So do you ever take a day off? No. You're open Sundays too? <laughs> Part of, part of Sunday. Part of Sundays. <laughs> I take off and go to church. And then I, I stay here until people get their Sunday paper. Then I go to church. And then, and then I come back and eat lunch and open up that lunch. Do you still sell gas here? I have one pump that's still working. Really? <laughs> sell a little bit. How many, uh, how many times? How often do you get delivery? Oh, about every two weeks. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right? I bet I bet people are glad to see you. Yeah. I think they'll miss me when I'm gone. But <laughs> they don't trade with me much now. You know, it's nice to see places like this still in operation in the 21st century where you can stop in, enjoy the company of people like Miss Jackson, have a Dublin Dr. Pepper, and head on down the road to Heiko. Heiko, Texas is considered by many to be the next up and coming tourist and shopping destination for Central Texas and the Northern Texas Hill Country. 
Touted in the media as the next Fredericksburg, Heiko is quickly becoming a spot on the Texas map for those wanting to escape from the city and experience life in small town Texas. There are a host of shops and businesses that have received national acclaim as well as a historic downtown shopping district that is known throughout Texas for its unique charm. Before we visit the Billy the Kid Museum and check in on this local legend, we felt it was time to try the famous Coffee Cup Family Restaurant near downtown. We're at the world famous Coffee Cup Cafe here in Heiko, Texas. Home of chicken fried steak, cream pie, favorite of Jody Dean's, and Southern Living Magazine. Show me the pastry. The Coffee Cup Family Restaurant is a central Texas landmark. Located at the junction of Highway 6 and 281 in Heiko, the Coffee Cup's a world famous stopping point for locals and travelers alike. I started riding in 1967. We gotta try to keep up with these Harley Davidsons. <laughs> you have more than just the bond on the road of the motorcycles. Tell us about your other bond. What got us started was the Marines. Okay, we're gonna get together to help us each other as far as fellowship and then other Marines. As you can tell, there's many different brands. It's not just Harley exclusive or Honda exclusive. And just enjoying each other's fellowship and riding together like today. Rain or shine, we've been out in bad weather and a good weather. Hey, what? Jody already gone in. He already eating some pie. He is. That guy. Watch the correct way to eat one of these. Mm. Baking is the specialty at the coffee cup. Donuts and breads are customer favorites, but it's the pies that get the most talk. And whichever pie you order, you will be back for more. And now a Texas two-wheeling restaurant review of the coffee cup in Heiko, Texas. Now, one of the more unusual claims they make here in Heiko, Texas, is that Billy the Kid actually survived that shootout with Pat Garrett in New Mexico, and he moved here to live and die as a man named uh, Ollie Brushy Bill Roberts. And of course, the folks in Fort Sumner, New Mexico, don't really like that claim, since they claim to have the real body of Billy the Kid laying there, and we're talking tourist dollars here. What do you think? Now, according to Heiko legend, Billy the Kid was not killed by Sheriff Pat Garrett. Rather, he died of a heart attack en route to the Heiko post office at the age of 90. We just say Pat Garrett killed the wrong person, wounded Billy, and he lived to be an old man. But everything happened out there, as far as his legend goes. No matter how Ollie L. Brushy Bill Roberts, alias William Bonney, also known as Billy the Kid, died, his legend lives on and its museum features a whole lot of memorabilia. Well, in 1950, an El Paso reporter recorded an interview with a woman named Mrs. Martel Abels, who was quoted to say that she had seen and talked to Billy the Kid the day before. She went on to say that he was living under the alias of Ollie Roberts, nicknamed Brushy Bill. Could that infamous man, thought to be one of the worst of all outlaws, sworn dead and buried since 1881, actually have survived till 1950? Or was it the start of one of the biggest hoaxes in Texas history? Is this legend true or not? I guess we'll never know. And even if the controversy hasn't been put to rest, Brushy Bill has been. Now it's back to Glen Rose and more of the beautiful Northern Texas Hill Country in towns like Iredell, Morgan, Brazos Point, and Walnut Springs.
finally back here in Glen Rose is a wonderful place just off 67 called Tres Rios. And in back, a restaurant you won't believe called Taylor's Turn and Burn. It's a really cool and interesting story. Taylor Simpson is only 12 years old and she's already a national finalist in barrel racing. Let's take a look. You would not know it to look at her. She appears to be an average 12-year-old girl, but Taylor Simpson is no average 12-year-old. She rides, not a motorcycle like me, but horses and barrel racing. In fact, she is a national finalist. How did you get started in barrel racing? Well, my dad's whole side of the family has been doing stuff with horses, and the main thing that they've done is barrel racing, so that's how I got it. What's the most exciting part of barrel racing? Well, the most exciting part is when you come out of the alleyway after your run is finished, and you know if you had a good run and you did what you came in there to do. After their little girl's huge success in the arena, they decided to build a family eatery that could serve the folks at Trace Rios and the general public and to share their daughter's success. My mom said that it had to have something. It had to have Taylor's name in it. My dad said that it had to have something to do with barrel racing. So we just put those two together. I can't tell you how, I, it's, there's no words to tell you how proud I am of her. For three years now, Turn and Burn has been very successful. They offer a great variety of food from burgers, pizza, steak, and prime rib, but their specialty is lasagna. It's home cooked and it's really, really good. My dad's family's from Sicily, so we have a great red sauce recipe and, and uh, everything's from scratch. The atmosphere is great and you can see all of the photos of Taylor in action. Taylor's not just the star of the restaurant, but she waits tables and cleans and helps run the restaurant with her mother. My future is to be a world champion at this sport and I want to be a veterinarian too. Thank you for the interview. You did a really good job. I'm going to go check out the food. Okay. Taylor, thanks for letting us drop by to tell your story. And thank you for watching this edition of Texas Two Wheeling. We hope you'll join us the next time. And by the way, that was Brian Burns at the top of our show with his version of our theme song. Once again, before we go, one of Texas' top performing songwriters. Here's Brian Burns with the Texas Two Wheeling version of I've Been Everywhere. I've traveled every road in this here land. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've crossed the desert's bare, man. Mountain air, man. Travel, I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Waco, Hyco, Hondo, Navasota, Winsburg, Jacksboro, Hillsboro, Santa Rosa, Austin, Houston, Galveston, Texas, Canada, Frisco, Buffalo, Conroe, Carson, County, Goliad, Grosbeck, Glen Rose, Red Oak, Post Oak, Live Oak, Lone Oak, no joke. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've crossed the desert's bare, man. Breathe the mountain air, man. Wind blows.